I'm Jamal Corner. I'm going to be facilitating this morning's information session. If you require Spanish translations for the session, please follow the directions provided on the screen. I also want to remind our speakers this morning to speak a bit slowly as today's session is being translated simultaneously. Joining us today, we have our superintendent, Dr. Gudio Crossway, our associate superintendent of education services, Dr. Shauna Dinkins, Chief Business Officer Gregory Fromm, and Assistant Superintendent of Resources, Dr. Brian Lucas. At this time, I'm going to introduce our superintendent, Dr. Crossway, who will provide an overview of today's session. Dr. Crossway. Thank you, Mr. Corner. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for attending today's information session. First and foremost, I hope that you, your family, and your loved ones are all doing well. I know that there are a lot of questions, and we will do our best to answer as many as we can today, but we will also have multiple opportunities for you to share your concerns and direct questions to us. Today, we will provide you with a summary of the issues we are facing in our current instructional plans for the next school year. And at the end of this meeting, we will have a question and answer session. While we know that the situation is not ideal, we are making these plans with student safety as our focus and plan to make the shift as seamless as possible. As a school district, we cannot compromise on student safety. Now, we'll provide some background on the timeline of events that has led to these realignment plans. <clears throat> Excuse me. Plans for the instructional shifts were sparked by the discovery of structural issues at Linwood High School following the unexpected failure of exterior roofing panels, also known as soffits, at Linwood High School. Linwood Unified launched an immediate review to determine the extent of the issues on campus and the repairs needed. Lua Unified families were also provided high level information that there had been a structural issue that we were looking into. <clears throat> Our school board immediately scheduled an emergency board meeting to address the situation in June. Lua Unified quickly launched a review to determine the extent of the issues on campus and the repairs needed. Additionally, we have worked closely with the California Division of State Architects, also known as DSA, to address these concerns. Once again, once the soffits were identified as concerning, our board quickly acted to hire a firm and then overabundance of caution to remove the ceiling soffits. As you can see on this timeline, numerous meetings took place and ultimately, Linwood Unified hired an independent structural engineer to help us assess the safety of the building while investigating the cause of the collapse. On July 23rd, the Board of Education made an agreement with Petra Structural Engineers to assess the condition of plaster soffits at Linwood High School and an agreement with Delterra to provide emergency project oversight of the soffits. On September 10th, the board approved an emergency resolution to completely remove all soffits at Linwood High School. Then on October 8th, our board approved agreements with contractors for the emergency removal of the soffits. On November 8th, our school board held another special meeting and study session. And then on November 12th, our board approved an agreement with the engineering firm to assess the condition of various overhead items on the Linwood High School campus. For a little more background information on the October 8th board meeting, the Board of Education entered into service agreements with AP Construction and Fast Track Construction. On November 12th, the district made structural engineering service agreements with Petra Structural Engineers to assess the condition of various overhead items at Linwood High School. And again, if there's any questions, please uh, put them up on the chat 
You can write them in English and in Spanish, and we will get to all those questions at the end of this session. Then on December 10th, we entered into an agreement with TYR Incorporated to provide assessment services in conjunction with emergency plaster soffit removal at Linwood High School. On Sunday, January 24th, our school board held another special meeting to review an update from Linwood High School facilities and the proposed instructional shifts for the 21-22 school year. At this meeting, our school board emphasized that the process must be very public, very transparent, with all decisions putting student and staff safety first. Bye. The following day on Monday, if someone could mute Alicia. Then the following day on Monday, January 25th, our district informed school principals of these shifts. And we also met with the staff at Linwood High School and at Linwood Middle School. On Tuesday, the 26th, we notified families that the structure concerns were serious and that plans were in development to physically move instruction off Linwood High School's campus while the investigation continues and repairs are made. As a district, we are planning to move all Linwood High School student instruction to another campus during the 21-22 school year, which will impact middle and elementary school students as well. Please note the following dates of the information we've already held and their respective topics. Each information session has been recorded and is available on our district website in English and in Spanish. Throughout this transition, we will provide regular updates to our community, sharing new information as it becomes available through a variety of platforms, including our website, our phone blast, info sessions like this, as well as social media. We will also be gathering feedback through a digital survey that will be sent to Linwood families very soon. As always, I personally wanna thank you for your steadfast support of Linwood Unified as we continue to work together to create the strongest learning environments and strive to ensure the success for every one of our students. And again, please note that at the end of this session, we will respond to the questions that you submit on the chat. So please, please put your questions as they come to you on the chat and um, continue submitting them throughout the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Crossway. As I know we've had a few people join us since the start of the info session, I'm gonna direct you back to our instructions here. Um, if you're in need of uh, Spanish translations, you can follow the instructions here on the screen. At this time, we're gonna have those instructions read for you in Spanish. Un recordatorio que esta sesión se está transmitiendo en inglés y en español. Siga las instrucciones en la pantalla para ver y escuchar la presentación en español. Hacia arriba de su pantalla, haga clic en View Options para ver las opciones de idioma de la presentación. En el fondo de su pantalla, haga clic en Interpretación para ver las opciones de audio. All right, thank you for that. At this time, I'm gonna introduce Mr. Greg Fromm. He's gonna provide us more detail on the construction issues. Mr. Fromm. Thank you, Jamal. We will now take a look at the affected buildings. The G building, the central multi-story facility where the classrooms are located, has been closed since June of 2020. Out of an abundance of caution, the district head, the engineering firm, assess all buildings on campus. To a lesser extent, there are structural concerns at other LHS buildings. Once the investigation is complete and repairs are identified, a timeline will be set and shared with the community. At this time, we believe that the repairs to the lesser affected facilities could be completed before the 21-22 school year begins. 
At this time, we do not have information on the costs of repairs or the remedies to Linwood High School's campus, but the district will share these details once they are known. The district will aggressively pursue remuneration from anyone deemed responsible for construction flaws, as well as matching funds from available state facility dollars. As you know, the Linwood community has supported bond measures for facility improvements in recent years. In 2012, the community supported Measure K, a $93 million bond measure, which has so far funded over $52.7 million in repair projects and upgrades. The community also supported the $65 million Measure N back in November of 2016. This measure has funded over 15 million in projects to date. In January of 2020, the district issued $25 million in bonds for repairs and upgrade projects across the community. It's important to note that the community's approval of Measure K and Measure N included guidance for how those bond funds were to be used with a focus on specific facilities and repairs needed across the district. Funds from past bonds have been spent or are currently committed to projects across the district. Here's a list of a few completed and pending projects at sites throughout the school district. Now back to Jamal. All right, thank you, Mr. Fromm. I'm gonna give a friendly reminder to our speakers this morning to speak a little slowly for the benefit of our simultaneous translation. Also just wanna remind our audience to continue sending your questions into the chat. I see a couple here already. Uh, keep sending those throughout and we can answer those at the very end during our question and answer session. At this time, I'm gonna introduce Dr. Shauna Dinkins. She's gonna be highlighting the district's current plans for realignment. Dr. Dinkins. Good morning. Thank you all for being with us today. Um, now that we've provided background on the construction issues, we will outline the instructional shifts for next year. Linwood High School students will attend Linwood Middle School campus, which formerly housed Linwood High School. Current fifth graders will remain at their elementary schools next year for sixth grade. Cesar Chavez and Hostler Middle Schools will have grades seven and eight with most Linwood Middle School students attending Hostler. These adjustments are planned for the 21-22 school year, but may be extended as needed based on the extent of the construction issues at Linwood High School. Here we have a map that outlines the feeder patterns detailing where elementary students will promote for middle school. Currently, we have 10 Linwood Unified Elementary Schools that teach up to sixth grade. Next year, Lincoln and Marshall students entering sixth grade will remain on their elementary school campus as well. This is a result of the anticipated space constraints at the middle schools, which are caused by the need to move Linwood High students off of their campus and on to the LMS campus. In 21-22, teaching staff will be augmented at Lincoln and Marshall to accommodate the addition of sixth graders. Additionally, the district is committed to providing our sixth graders on these campuses with rigorous curriculum appropriate for their grade level. We also believe this shift can also benefit the students because it can provide continuity of instruction and additional support for young students displaced for the last year by COVID-19 pandemic. More details about this shift and how it pertains to our elementary students will be shared as they become available. Thank you, and I'll hand it back over to Jamal. Thank you, Dr. Dinkins. Also just wanna thank our audience this morning for joining us, we certainly appreciate it. Uh, many of these details are still pending, of course, but our focus is on student safety uh, and, and doing what's best for our community. We will continue to provide you regular and transparent updates um, as information becomes available. And we'll do that through our district website, 
as well as on our school websites and emails to our families. Now at this time, I think we're gonna shift over to your questions you've submitted in our chat and we'll answer those to the best of our ability. Before we begin, just wanna remind you that if you have a complex or personal question, you can email that to meeting questions at mylusd and we'll respond with a private uh, or direct message. For those of you who might be watching this at a later date, just wanna encourage you to also use that email so that we, we can answer your questions. And then of course, lastly, uh, during this question and answer session, if somehow we miss your question, uh, you can go ahead and email us as well uh, to make sure you get a response. So let's go ahead and go to the chat here. Looks like our first question is, will there be transportation for students? Dr. Crossway, would you like to start with the transportation question? Sure, thank you. Thank you for asking this question. This is one of the more popular questions that we have received. And that's why it's so important for us to hear from you. And I, I, I can tell you that I don't have a clear answer for you yet, but we are keeping this option open. We are in conversation with the city because we also know that we may have to adjust the, the transportation of um, the, the trolley in, in the Linwood City. But, but the transportation question is important because we wanna hear from you. And that's why when you get that survey, please make sure you fill it out and let us know. If we see that there's obviously a need for transportation, this is something that we want to be able to support. But again, if it's only gonna be a few families who are asking about transportation, it'll be a little more difficult to support uh, and justify, right? So again, make sure that you, when you get that survey, you fill it out, return it, and spread the word, and make sure that you put transportation in there, and we will keep you posted in terms of that response as well. Thank you. And actually, our first two questions were about transportation, so hopefully um, you both received your answers, and of course, we'll, we'll keep you updated on that as well. Um, our next question, what will be the maximum number of students in classrooms at the elementary and middle schools? Dr. Dinkins, did you want to touch on this question? Good morning. Thank you for that question. So right now, um, we have the permission to be open as a cohort, and that capacity is up to 14 students per class. However, with the new regulations, um, we have to work with our associations on what exactly that hybrid model will look like um, for middle and high school, because as of right now, um, they're working on the plans for secondary, but at the elementary level, um, 12 to 14 kids. Thank you, Dr. Dinkins. And I think the second part of that was how many classes are anticipated to be in trailers or outside of the main buildings? Mr. Fromm, would you like to deal with this question? Mr. Jamal, thank you. So uh, with the transition of Linwood High over to Linwood Middle School, we're going to have to add an, addi an additional 22 portable classrooms. Um, we're also looking to add four to five portable classrooms as well to CCMS to meet the needs of the students that will be attending those school sites. All right, thank you, Mr. Fromm. And we have a next question about our STEAM program. I'd like to know if the STEAM program will continue and which school will have it since it's a very good class for our students. Um, and I think a lot of people have actually had similar questions about programs transferring over to new schools. Um, Dr. Dinkins, would you like to field this? Of course, thank you for the question. So our STEAM program will transfer from LMS to Hostler Middle School. And we also will be expanding those options at CCMS. Our, we have um, STEAM teachers at all three sites, um, but this is an opportunity to expand um, the CCMS program and the LMS one will transfer over to Hostler. Thank you for that. And our next question, I would like to know how the students of Thurgood Marshall Elementary will be transitioning to sixth grade. 
Dr. Dinkins, would you like to deal with this question? Sure, um, I had this question before. So um, as stated in the presentation, all 10 of our 12 elementaries go up to sixth grade. So it is our, um, our plan for sixth grade to be added to Lincoln and Marshall and for those sixth grade classes to be similar to the other sixth grade classes in the district. So they will stay on their campus and they will transition to sixth grade with a new teacher. Thank you for that. We have a question here about school re schools reopening. Um, they're asking, will all schools be reopened by 2021, 2022? Dr. Crossway, would you like to field this question? Yeah, so all of our schools are open, although we're providing the support virtually. And we, we did open up um, for some limited in-person services in the fall, and then we shut down uh, momentarily. And so it, it remains to be seen. Yesterday, LA County Department of Public Health made the announcement as well as the County Office of Education that for the first time, LA County actually met the threshold to be able to reopen and bring kids back in person for elementaries. So I'm, I'm staying positive and hopeful that we'll be able to continue providing our virtual support, but also the in-person services that so many of our students and families need. And, and I know that there are also some questions out there for families who may not be ready to bring back their kids in person. One is we want to make that option available. And two, as Dr. Dinkins said earlier, the number of students in the classroom may be between 12 and 14. What we've seen from other districts that have already brought back kids is that that number is actually between nine and 12 because some families will choose to keep their children at home. And if you are interested in keeping your child at home, we also have our virtual academy and the virtual academy will provide parents with another option so that their child can continue learning from home if they're not ready to come back in person. So, um, you know, things change. They keep constantly changing on us, but we're hopeful that for the 21-22 school year and even sooner, summer and within the next few months, that we'll be able to continue providing more in-person support services for our students. And, and to be clear, we got the uh, go ahead from the county two weeks ago to allow athletes to come back for in-person conditioning. And I know some of our students are back on campus for that. And as a district, we require that we follow all health and safety protocols, all measures are in place, including wearing the face mask, the physical distancing, and that hasn't changed. So. Hope that helps with that answer, with that question. Thank you, Dr. Crossway. Our next question, will there be hybrid programs to help with the volume of students on campus? Dr. Dinkins, would you like to field this question? Yes, thank you. So in a hybrid model, which is um, more than likely what will happen at all levels, um, all kids are not on campus at the same time. So we are collaborating with our associations to get those parameters in place. Um, but in a, in a school of 700, 800 kids, um, right now the current data is that we can't have everybody at school at once. So those details will be coming as we continue to collaborate with our associations. Thank you. My question is for our special needs students. Is the district prepared to provide their related services? Also, how is the whole inclusion setting going to look? I'm concerned for the space capacity around school. Dr. Dinkins? Yes, so um, much like the last question, in the hybrid model, all students are not at school at the same time, but yes, once we are allowed to reopen our services for special ed students will continue i know that speech therapy and other services have been online but we are working um, to bring those services back in person um, we still have some collaboration with associations to to do 
But yes, um, full services for our special needs students will take place um, once we are allowed to reopen. Space won't be an issue. You're on mute, Mr. Corner. Thank there you. There you go. <laughs> My son's school of residence is Washington, but he attends Lugo because he is in special education classes. Which school will he attend and do I have to request permission? So the next school, oh, excuse me. When we go by feeder pattern and not by address, if you're currently at Washington, the next school will be CCMS. Um, if you wish to go to Hostler, you can request a, a transfer through our student services. Our, the link for transfers is on our website or you are able to come in in person. Okay, thank you for that. Our next question, thoughts on year round sessions. Okay. Yes. Dr. Dr. Crossway. Can I just say, can we just say yes? <laughs> I, you know, I, aside from the shifting of the students physically from one location to the other, I firmly believe that our youth need to have structured activities that are positive, that allow them to be with caring adults in a caring environment. And so I would love for your kids to be in our schools seven days a week, Monday, you know, through Monday and all days of the hour, all hours of the day. And so with that, we know that coming together or, or, you know, doing the learning via virtual environment is not the same. It's not the same as being in a classroom with a teacher, with our staff, and with their peers. And so with that, we are planning to ramp up the options that we have available for families and students for after school support, for weekends and summer. We really want to encourage all families to take advantage of the upcoming um, programs that we'll be offering during the summer, uh, during the spring, and it, it may not all be in person, but we really believe that it, it's, it's going to help students and, and they need to get out of their house. They need to get outdoors and hang out and, and be with their peers for that social emotional well-being as well. And, and as adults, if we're having a hard time, now I imagine a nine-year-old, 13 year right? It's They're having a hard time, even though they may not be able to fully express the frustration or what they're feeling. But so as a district, we are again, planning to ramp up what we're doing. And it may not be seven days a week, but again, uh, we wanna make sure that there are more options for students and families, whether it be enrichment activities, like music or the sports or other academic based activities, but it's just another opportunity for our students to take advantage of the resources that will be coming up again on weekends during the spring in person virtual and, and during the summer. Thank you for that. We have a follow up question on the transportation. How can the community help with supporting or influencing the city to provide free transportation? i.e. trolleys for students. It is an equity issue to not provide transportation to students. Dr. Crossway, I don't know if you had a follow up on that. Yeah, um, really quick, because I've never been on the trolley here in Linwood. What, what is the cost? If someone could put that in the chat, and I would be more than happy to go out and speak with the city manager. She's been very, very helpful and collaborative with the school district and very supportive. So if this is a need and we can help out with that, we are more than happy. So just let us know what it is right now. And I will be more than happy to follow up with the city to see if we can work something out as well moving forward. Thank you for that recommendation. Excellent. Will there be a block schedule? Dr. Dinkins? So currently we have our mandated instructional minutes from the state and we did block schedule so that we would not have our students online for six hours a day. Um, we still have to collaborate with our associations to see what it will look like uh, for the 21-22 school year. So we're still in the planning stages for that. But as soon as we are finished 
with those collaborations, we will um, update the community as soon as possible. Thank you. If kids are really struggling, are they going to be the first priority to go back to school? So I was gonna throw this to Dr. Crossway, but also have maybe have Dr. Lucas speak to some of our uh, social emotional support systems we have. Yeah, I'll just, I wanna say that everyone is struggling right now. Adults, kids, and I know that some students may be thriving or doing better off academically in the virtual environment, but this has been very, very difficult for everyone. For families to know that they're worried about their jobs, they're worried about their health. And, and again, you may not necessarily see that in a student's grade or their motivation, but you know, we've, we're almost in a whole year of this. It's, it's the end of February, and this started March 13th, and it's, it's been tough. So for us, we're going to, I know Dr. Dinkins will be sending out another survey, but we want to know from you if you're ready to bring your kid back, and what are some of the needs that you have so that we can help accommodate you. But we know that families have child care issues. We know that some students are not doing well virtually. And, and, and there's a other need for support. So for us, again, once we have the, we're able to safely bring back kids, and right now the numbers are moving in that direction, we wanna continue working with our teachers to make sure that they also feel comfortable and that they're also safe so that we can bring kids back because this really is an equity issue. If you're a family, a single parent, and you have to go to work, and you have a seven-year-old at home, what are you supposed to do? And so as a school district, we want to be able to provide you with that support. But again, we want to make sure that we have all of our safety measures in place and that we're supporting our students and our families as well as our staff. And so there's different things that we've already done. So we've already purchased, for example, the MERV 13 air filters. We have the water, the handlet, what is it? Touchless uh, water fountains. We have the personal protective equipment. We have the hand sanitizers and kits for every classroom. We have the physical distancing markers everywhere. So we have all those things. And what we're seeing right now is that the likelihood of students transmitting the virus is, is not almost non-existent. But at the same time, we have to have more things in place. And so testing is really important. And I know that Linwood City has worked really hard to bring testing to the community. And so we now have testing, but people are not getting tested. So we got to make sure that people are aware that testing is now available. And then last Thursday, our school board has been pushing for us to make sure that we do more to get the vaccines here in Linwood. And so last Thursday, our school board adopted or approved an agreement with St. John's and they will be using one of our facilities to help distribute the vaccine here in the Linwood community. And it's gonna be available to anyone who falls, falls under the, the tiers, right? So 65 and older, uh, educators when it becomes available to them. So it'll be open to our teachers, our staff, but also it's gonna be another resource to the community. And so I'll, I'll leave it there. And I know Dr. Lucas will probably have something else to add to this as, and maybe even Dr. Jenkins as well. I really, uh, and from, from the human resources perspective, I think Dr. Crossway touched on it. We're working very hard with our teachers associations and other staff associations to make sure that they feel protected and ready to, to uh, return to work. Um, and also, as Dr. Crossway mentioned, trying to find multiple avenues for vaccinations for our employees. Um, and uh, Dr. Dinkins, I don't know if you want to touch on student social emotional support. Yes, thank you. We have adopted um, a social emotional support. We also have, we still have our hotline, our five licensed social workers, but in collaboration with our union, we are looking to include 
our social emotional learning as part of our instructional minutes, but it's still in the planning stages for collaboration. Thank you for that. And I see we have some responses with the uh, trolley information in the chat. Looks like it's 25 cents and someone also provided a link. So thank you all for that information. Uh, our next question here, would the vaccine be mandatory in the case that the children will return to school? Dr. Crossway, would you like to field this question? Sure. Um, <clears throat> So right now the vaccine is only available for people who are 16 and up. And I, I know California last week announced that if you have certain medical conditions, it, it, you can now, they'll be available for 16 years and, and older starting in March. And again, that may change tomorrow, it may change today, but right now that's what the information that we know. And, and currently there is no vaccine for anyone under 16. And I know it's being developed. I believe Dr. Fauci last week announced that it might be ready by the fall. Um, but again, the vaccine may be approved by the fall, but the distribution may take longer as well. And so right now there is no mandated required vaccine for, um, for students or, or younger people. Thank you. Can you please address safety patrolling around Hostler Middle School, given that it's adjacent to the park? Dr. Crossway. Yeah, so thank you for asking this question. We got a similar question regarding the safety over by Rosa Parks, given that Linwood Middle School is now going to be um, housing high school students. So with this, what I've shared with the associations is that we're not reducing our staff. And that means that we're going to have more staff to be able to um, support the middle schools, but also just the area around Rosa Parks and Linwood Middle School. And uh, you guys know that our safety staff, they weren't just on the campuses. Pre-pandemic, our safety staff was on Imperial Boulevard, on, on Bullis. They were at the, I said this before at Evan Me, so I gotta say it again, at the Taco Bell on Atlantic and um, and Imperial or the you know the Winchell's Donuts right there. And that's because we wanna make sure that our students feel safe going to school and going home. And anything that we can do to support those efforts, um, you know, we will do it. And so with that, I, I do wanna say that the we will have additional staff now that we'll be able to spread out to our other school sites. And I know that in the winter time, after the time change, that there's some additional concerns in some parts of our community and we wanna have an increased presence there to support as well. Thank you for that. Just wanna also remind you if, um, if you have a you know complex question or if a question occurs to you kind of after this session, um, please email us at meetingquestions at mylusd.org. We've been using that email address to uh, address questions throughout. So in, anytime you have it, you're welcome to email us and we'll, we'll get back to you on that. Jamal, um, may I interrupt? Sure. I'm going to say something in Spanish because we have someone that's on the English side and they're having a hard time. So um, maybe we can have the translator to come on to the English. But eh, eh, lo voy a decir en español. Si hay personas que están siguiendo esta presentación, recuerden que tenemos la opción en la pantalla hacia arriba, oprima View Options. Eso más siga lo, la información que está aquí. Y en la pantalla donde dice View Options, puede oprimir ahí. Y la presentación va a estar visible en español y la va a poder escuchar. In Espanol. So I'll let the translator come on so she can probably do a much better job than I did. Did we have uh, Claudia available to provide our uh, instructions for hearing this in Spanish? Yes, of course. Um, 
como dijo Dr. C, hacia arriba de su pantalla, haga clic en View Options para ver las opciones de idioma de la presentación. Y en el fondo de su pantalla, haga clic en Interpretación para ver las opciones de audio. La presentación se está transmitiendo en inglés y en español. Thank you so much for that. Also want to remind you that all these meetings are being recorded. Uh, will be posted on our district website and those will also be available in English and Spanish. Uh, looks like our next question. Will it be mandatory to go back to school or can some students stay at home and do it virtually? Dr. Dinkins. Um, parents will have the option to attend school virtually. Um, we have that option right now with our virtual academy. Um, but yes, in the fall for the 21-22 school year, that will be a possibility. Thank you for that. And I don't see anything new. I'm going to remind you that we do have our meeting questions at mylusd.org email for any of your questions, uh, any of your future inquiries that you want us to respond to. We've had a lot of great questions today, a lot of new ones actually. So thank you. Thank you all for all that information. Um, we also have information on our chat uh, about our virtual academy. Um, if you wanted any information about that, um, about options aside from in-person, um, you can call our number and uh, discuss that with, with one of our staff members. So if we don't have any further questions, I will thank you once again for joining us. I'm going to throw it back to Dr. Crossway, who's going to close us out here. Dr. Crossway. Thank you, Mr. Porter. Thank you, Mr. Porter. So I just want to, again, thank each and every one of you for joining us today. I, I know that there's a lot of questions, and I just want to remind you as well that if you have more questions, which you will, is, is write down this information. Meeting questions at mylusd.org. Send us your questions. You're going to have more questions. Visit our website. Uh, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I don't think we have a TikTok yet, right, Mr. Corner? In the works. Oh, yeah, probably. It's probably a good thing we don't have a TikTok, <laughs> but it, it's so important that that you get the information that's accurate, because there's a lot of misinformation, unfortunately, out there. And as a school district, we are committed to providing you with updates as they become available. And, and know this, that we're, we're talking about a physical change of location for students from one location to another but we're still here, we're the same people. We're not changing. Your teachers are not changing. Your principals are not changing. And they are working and doing some incredible things to support students and families here in Hollywood. And I am so proud of the work that they're doing. And we're, we're, we're committed to you. And so I, I wanna make sure that you're aware of that. And, and if you have any questions, Go and ask your school secretary, call your school principal, reach out to any one of us. We're all here to support you. And the other thing I just wanna share with you is that there's still gonna be a lot of questions. We're gonna have more information sessions with you. And, and if someone missed this, have them go to our website. We recorded all of them and they're available in English and in Spanish. And so with that, I wanna thank our cabinet, I want to thank our, our principals who are on this meeting, our staff who are on this meeting, our school board for their vision and their leadership. And I want to thank, um, of course, our, our translator, Elizabeth Orozco, and all of our um, team members from VMA for helping us organize these events. Please continue to take care of yourself. Keep your distance. Don't come together with people from other households. Continue wearing your, your face mask. And if, if you're eligible, we recommend that you get the vaccine so that we can get out of this sooner than later. 
thank you so much for your time and enjoy the rest of your day. That concludes our meeting. Thank you for joining us.